Good morning, YouTube. Happy Monday. I just got back from the grocery store with all the foods that I'm about to start eating on my AIP lifestyle change. I don't want to call it a diet because I am still allowed to eat pretty much what I want. There's just some things I have to cut out. So the AIP is the autoimmune protocol and this lifestyle of eating is directed to reduce inflammation in the body. Over the course of either 30 days or 90 days, so you can do the protocol for between 30 and 90 days, the idea is that you're only eating foods that do not cause inflammatory responses in the body. After a certain amount of time, the immune system becomes starved and returns back to normal and stops attacking your body. So that in essence is an autoimmune condition. I've mentioned it in previous videos, but for the past 20 years, probably longer, I've been suffering from Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This condition is an increase in the thyroid peroxidase autoantibodies in your immune system and those specifically attack thyroid gland, which over time destroys the function of the thyroid gland. And as you probably already know, the thyroid gland produces the thyroid hormones that are absolutely necessary for vitality or life. It's a super, super important gland and it really needs to function at an optimal level in order to be at your best. So I've mentioned before, and I'll give you a quick summary of what's going on. I've been diagnosed in the past with hypothyroidism, actually subclinical, because my thyroid hormones in my blood system circulating were pretty much normal, but my TSH, was, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone, was creeping up over time. So when you have that, they consider that subclinical. So they just pump you up with synthetic thyroid hormones to trick your pituitary gland into believing that you have enough circulating thyroid hormone so it stops producing the TSH or the thyroid stimulating hormone. So the other component and the really more important component is to make sure that the reason why your thyroid hormone is not low, to make sure it's not because of an autoimmune condition. They could have kept giving me all the thyroid hormones in the world, but my autoimmune component was still destroying my thyroid gland. So it's not until the autoimmune condition is controlled, then I'll be normal. Then, I'll, then my thyroid hormone will be normal again, and the circulating thyroid hormones will be normal again. And so the idea or the hope is that if I'm able to control the inflammation and the autoimmune condition is under control, naturally with diet, then I won't need to be stuck taking thyroid hormone replacement for the rest of my life. So hopefully this works out. So I'm starting my AIP today. That again is the autoimmune protocol. And instead of focusing on the foods that you have to completely eliminate, which is a long list and it really stinks, I'm just gonna focus on the foods that you are or will be allowed to eat. On the AIP, you can eat most vegetables, except nightshades and mushrooms. So that kind of stinks because I love mushrooms, but it's fine. You are allowed to eat asparagus, spinach, lettuce, broccoli, beets, cauliflower, carrots, celery, artichokes, garlic, onions, zucchini, squash, rhubarb, cucumbers, turnips, watercress. And you're supposed to have these with every meal during this protocol. So I might be wind up eating like a cucumber for breakfast, but that's all right because those things are delicious. So I got me my cucumber here. We got some asparagus, love cauliflower. It's really easy to cook cauliflower, just chop it up, roll it around with olive oil and salt and pepper and it's delicious. Same thing with the broccoli. Of course we have our lo lovely delicious celery. I also did get seaweed, you know? 
So this is not on the restriction list, but it's not on the approved list either. So I'm assuming it should be fine. Next, next up on the list is fermented foods and those include sauerkraut, ugh, kimchi, don't even know what that is, pickled ginger, fermented cucumbers, coconut yogurt, and kombucha. And they're saying that if you have a histamine intolerance, you may actually need to just avoid those foods altogether. Next on the list is meats. And this is a lovely list because there's actually no restriction on meat. It just has to be organic. And that's totally fine. If you have like a Trader Joe's around you or some kind of health food store, you should have no problem getting organic foods. And it's actually at Trader Joe's, like really good prices. Shout out to Trader Joe's. I got me some wild Alaskan salmon and also some wild sea scallops. And this is like fine dining here. And to cook it at home, it's like you get it for a fraction of the cost. It's amazing. Next up on the list are low glycemic fruits, such as uh, apricots, plums, apples, pear, peach, cherries, and berries, which I'm so excited about because I eat berries like all the time. So that's pretty amazing that those are on the list, strawberries and uh, blackberries there. And we also got plum, <laughs> plum cots, which is amazing because this is like a plum and an apricot had a baby. And I love both of those things and they're both on the approved list. So awesome there. And I'm not a huge apple eater, but I know I'm probably going to be hungry on this protocol. So I'm going to be eating a bunch of these. Next up on the list is coconut. So of course, as you probably figured out by now, dairy is completely off limits. I'm talking milk, eggs, cheese, butter, all that stuff. None of that stuff you can have, not, not milk based anyway. So they're really pushing coconut on this list. So you can have coconut butter, coconut milk, coconut cream, coconut oil, and coconut yogurt. So I found some coconut yogurt today. I'm gonna have this in a few minutes because I'm starving already. And hopefully it's it's good. I mean, I have coconut milk here. I, I generally find coconut based anything really doesn't have a taste at all, which I guess is better than having a terrible taste. So can't complain there. Next up on the list is herbal teas. Oh, non-caffeinated of course, non-stimulating, so no green tea. You can have like decaffeinated green tea, but other than that, stick to the herbals. No black teas, no red teas. Uh, just stick with like white tea and, um, and, and chamomile tea. So that's your safest options. Next up on the list, my absolute favorite is olives and olive oil. I love, love, love both of those things. And also garlic is on the list. So I found this really exciting type of olive which has garlic cloves in it. I mean, this is like heaven sent right here. It's amazing. Artichokes are also on the list and I got me some of these beautiful, delicious grilled artichoke hearts. So I'm super excited to uh, try that out. And finally on the list is something called ghee butter. Now I've had ghee butter in the past. I am not a fan, <laughs> so I will not be adding that to my list. But if you can't find like coconut butter, which I was so upset I couldn't find today, even the vegan butters have all the ingredients that you can't have like soy. So if you're really itching for butter, try the ghee butter. It's better than nothing, I guess, and maybe you like it. So I will give you an update in about a week on how this diet is going. Hopefully some of my symptoms will resolve, such as constant fatigue and a little bit of hair loss, which is like, I, I used to have double this amount. And um, although I still have a lot, thank God, it's, it's gotten a lot thinner over the years. And the ultimate test is going to be when I go back and get my TPA or thyroid peroxidase antibodies tested, that's gonna be like the end all be all of this. 
So I hope this video helped. And if you are suffering from an autoimmune condition, it doesn't have to be Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It could be rheumatoid arthritis or any kind of autoimmune condition. I highly suggest doing this protocol. It's only for at the least 30 days, which is what I'm going to be doing. And it could completely change your life. So please let me know if you have any questions or concerns or comments. I would love to hear your stories and I would love to hear if you've actually tried this protocol before and how you felt about it. Have a beautiful day.